morning, everybody. Lovely day. Saw a big herd of elk going down the street today. Thought, you know, they can get out early. I can get out early. So welcome to the Welcome Connor Memorial Community of Faith. Everyone is welcome here, no matter where you're from. Do we have visitors? We like to welcome visitors. Ah, please stand and tell us where you're from. We're just from down the road in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> and we attend uh, St. John's United Church in Holland. Oh, please do join us after for coffee and join us in the Gordon uh, Hall up here. And I am John Person. I'm the worship leader today. And <laughs> and uh, <coughs> certainly welcome to have everyone here. There is a bit of a, a twist today. Uh, first of all, uh, I am living proof that the new roster system is working because uh, that was an idea of Greg's for some time to get the roster going rather than that uh, clipboard. And so uh, I'd be honored to be the first worship leader on the roster and teach the up and working thanks to hard work from, from Greg and Olivia Stevenson. Uh, now, after the service, if you go in and get your coffee, we're going to bring you back in here for about 10 minutes because the Futures Exploration Team is going to uh, run us through the future, which they say the future isn't what it used to be. I know a baseball coach doesn't quite run that way, but uh, uh, they will uh, meet with us after. If you can stay, by all means do. I know some have to leave for the airport and so on. But uh, come back and we'll hear from the Futures Exploration Team. Incidentally, the, the expression, the future ain't what it used to be, isn't what they used. And Yogi Berra was not the first to say it. It was the British poet Robert Graves. Uh, apparently, and he may have been quoting the French poet. So there you are. That's a bit of a investigator. We know that Christ is with us at all times and in all places. And in worship, we signify that by receiving the Christ candle.
we acknowledge that the sacred lands on which we live and gather are the traditional uh, Treaty 7 territories of the ERP and Dakota nations, Bears Claw, Chinnakee, and Goodstone, the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, and Kikani, and the Satina, also traditionally, spiritually, and culturally shared with the Katunaha, Sequepnich, Mountain Cree, and Kmeki. We are dedicated to working in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and change. And while normally this is the time that we have our uh, affirming statement as well, that will be embedded in the sermon today. Please join with me in the responsive prayer of approach, which you will find in your bulletin or on the screen. God of brilliant sunsets and shining rainbows. God of golden daffodils and glowing autumn leaves. God of all blues of summer seas. God of all greens in bush and field. In rivers and oceans and lakes. In rough stones on a beach. And polished jewels in the showcase. God of people. Brown and amber, pink and ebony. Artistic and athletic, practical and visionary, compassionate and laughter bringing. God who colors us in a world of variety, we thank you. We thank you that you have made each of us unique, that you call us to contribute our special colors to life around us. We come to you. As we prepare to hear two scripture readings this morning, let us spend some time pondering a world where labels angrily and judgmentally directed at others cause such harm. We lament the ongoing strife between nations, between ethnic and religious groups, the barriers intentionally set up or casually left in place, and the brokenness between people of different genders and gender identities. I invite you now to quiet yourselves, to take three deep cleansing breaths, and to be open to a holy presence in our midst which is governed by none of these distinctions, present in such real ways to any who get labeled or attacked. Shalom, O oh God, be known by a world in need. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing verse 3 of There is a Time.
first one in particular, the Genesis, uh, written so fondly with me, I recall hearing this promise of God uh, at my mother's knee a long, long time ago. So the Genesis reading. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, the covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every, of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. Then reading from Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 29, <clears throat> the words of Paul. You are the sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. As I prepared for today's service, I was brought back uh, not only to the Sunday four years ago when this church building was beautifully bedecked with rainbows, uh, ones that we had uh, had loaned to us from Lakeview United Church in Calgary and also from the uh, Calgary Unitarians, but I also think back to the theological underpinnings of becoming an affirming ministry. With that in mind, today's message repeats and revisits much of what I spoke on that day. We also marked that uh, one year after us, uh, the Banff congregation went through their affirming process, uh, though by the time they had their affirming celebration Sunday, it needed to be online because uh, we were not able to meet in person at that time. We know when we look to the sky where rainbows come from, they come from water droplets, typically after a rain interacting with sunshine. Good old Wikipedia has this succinct definition. A rainbow is a meteorological phenomenon called by reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light in water droplets, resulting in a spectrum, spectrum of light appearing in the sky. Yet even with that knowledge of the science behind it all, no matter how many times we've seen rainbows, they surprise us and thrill us and make us want to share the joy. I think of the number of times that I've come up to a total stranger and point to them, look, whenever a rainbow appears. No wonder then that many cultures have looked to the sky at these wonderful fleeting expressions of color and discern within them a symbolic representation of diversity and some sort of divine presence. We look to the rainbow as nature's declaration that, that the world God gives is not just grayscale, but is filled with color. And not just red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, but the range within those colors. As a child, I remember I loved coloring with my Laurentian pencil crayon. <laughs> and in the full set, there was no fewer than 11 shades of green, ranging from moss green to emerald to my favorite, that nearly black shade called deep chrome green. 
and for graphic designers using the Pantone color system, there are around 300 hues of green. The world of color is an amazing thing. And those most attuned to the Earth's diversity, appreciative of the breadth of species and the range of human experience, are those who get most from the gift of life. Within our faith tradition, the rainbow has another significance, as we heard this morning. As our ancestors in the faith wondered about the origins of the world that they lived in, a mythology developed, which we take as second nature. Creation in six days with the seventh for rest. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the Tower of Babel, Noah and the Great Flood. These stories with the miraculous intertwined with the murderers attempted to shed some light on the gap between the life-giving, harmonious intentions of God and the ego-driven, divisive ways of humanity. The story of the rainbow in the book of Genesis comes after the waters recede from the great flood, and Noah's family and the full range of species restart the story of life. God, pictured in very masculine terms in this story, takes his bow, think bow and arrow, and hangs it in the sky, never to be used again. Every time when we see a rainbow in the sky, it is to remind us of God's promise to withhold anger. Within Jewish practice, there remains a tradition of saying a silent prayer when seeing a rainbow. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who remembers the covenant and is faithful to the covenant and keeps the promise. Remembering this biblical understanding of the rainbow as we celebrate our identity as an affirming community of faith is to remind us that if our picture of God, the one that I carry around with me, is that of an angry and domineering God, then I've got the wrong picture. The legend of God's war bow being hung up in the clouds, never to be used again, that's a story that is thousands of years old. And yet, in 2023, we still hear the name of God evoked in the midst of angry denunciations of the LGBTQ community, particularly trans and non-binary, or anyone else who gets perceived as different. We've had over 3,000 years to figure it out. Not to mention the entire story of Jesus Christ and his embodied expression of God's boundless love. It makes me wonder how long it will take and what further evidence is needed to finally let go of this notion of a God motivated by anger and judgment, whose approval of a person is somehow understood as conditioned. My hope, as we think back, three years in, in Banff, four years in Canmore, as we think back to those celebration days when we were surrounded by rainbows, is that the world will one day be freed from all vestiges of this angry God theology, replaced by a more biblical image of a God of acceptance, a God of unbounded universal love, a God who is love. In the words of Father Richard Rohr in his book, The Universal Christ, faith at its essential core is accepting that you are accepted. We cannot deeply know ourselves without also knowing the one who made us, and we cannot fully <coughs> accept ourselves without accepting God's radical acceptance of every part of us." End quote. What an amazing, affirming concept. The God of all creation, the God who loves you and me and us deeply and 
desperately, infuses loving intention into all the universe. The rainbow reminds us that love, not anger, rules the day, even as it reminds us that all human experience, all human experience, is cradled lovingly within God's ever-present care. Our second reading this morning from Paul's letter to the Galatians assesses this broad spectrum love of God and brings it to the community level. In the early days of the church, all manner of people from vastly different classes and backgrounds were coming together in the name of Christ Jesus. Questions were arising about how to handle this newly experienced diversity, and in answer, Paul memorably wrote, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. None of the categories that so easily divide us. None of the reason why warheads are flying in and around Gaza these days. None of these are points of division from God's standpoint. Not our ethnicity or religion, not our worldview or social status, not our gender or gender identity or sexual orientation. The Apostle Paul knew that these differences exist and in many parts, are, in many cases, are deep parts of how we see ourselves. But he is clear in stating that God's desire to break down hurtful divisions and hierarchies is strong. God breaks those divisions rather than propping them up. In Christ, there are no second-class citizens. There are no advantages for the wealthy or those deemed to be more pure of birth. The love shown in the life, deeds, words, and ongoing presence of Jesus Christ is without boundary and without without boundary and beyond measure. Seven months before our affirming celebration here in Canmore, Shannon and I had the privilege of attending the Universal Christ Conference in Albuquerque, featuring Jackie Lewis, John Dominic Crossan, and yes, Richard Gore. At the opening of that conference, we were greeted with beautiful words that have found their way into our church culture to an extent. They said, all of you are welcome here, and all of you is welcome here. That, I hope, is what you are hearing in this time of worship and celebration, and in those ancient words from Genesis and Galatians. The God whose loving commitment to the world is remembered each time we see a rainbow, loves you and every aspect of your being. The God whose love was so powerfully embodied in the person of Jesus engages all that you embody and loves you and your neighbor more fully than you or they could ask or imagine. As an affirming ministry with two campuses in Canmore and Banff, we proclaim once more that all of you are welcome here, and all of you, every bit of you, is welcome here. And we renew our commitment to Christ's call to confront the injustices and inequities of the world, to affirm with our whole being the truth of God's unconditional love in the face of all that tries to create winners and losers, approved and disapproved, entitled and disenfranchised. When our two congregations amalgamated on January 1st of this year, the previous mission statement of Rundle Memorial United Church became the affirming ministry statement of our amalgamated faith community. These words speak of our understanding of God's inclusive love. And I ask you now, as you are able, to rise and repeat responsibly the words of the affirming vision of Ralph Connor Memorial United 
the church. As a community of faith on traditional indigenous lands, we strive to follow Christ's example in reaching out to love and friendship to all. We are committed to full inclusion of people.
something completely different than the information. Come on, Carol. Hey, Rick, here come the three Pledge Fest sisters. <laughs> it is fall, so we'll probably have a bunch of them for a few Sundays. Yeah, well, the first year we did this in 2019 BC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we learned about the importance of our own individual giving plans that we submitted to our treasurer. Yes, I think. Almost everyone here knows how important it is to fill out a giving plan form and give it to the treasurer so that she can create a budget based on real information. It really is important. And I think almost everybody here knows how giving plans allow the council to make their spending decisions realistic. It sure is involved. And we already have the forms ready to hand out. Now. <laughs> and most of the folks here know all the different ways to give. After all. Nod, nod your heads, everybody. You know all the ways to give. After all, it's on the envelopes in your pew. It's on the internet, ralphconder.ca slash giving. It's on the giving forms. But if you want to give by fair donation, and save some money on taxes. <laughs> Talk to your investment advisor. <laughs> oh, so why are the best sisters standing here in front of us, smiling? This year we're going to do something different. Instead of fundraising, we're going to do fundraising. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me see that sign again. I think she forgot the D. Funda. <laughs> Everyone will be able to take one of these Christmas bags home with them today <laughs> and put something into it for a silent auction. Something that would raise funds that might be a fun Christmas guest for somebody on their list. Uh, the bags are really small. <laughs> a new car won't fit in. <laughs> well, we do have some examples, maybe. A little note that says, oh, we get somebody's cabin. Maybe a private concert, a dinner party, or maybe a snowshoe lesson and Odie. Oh, how about the promise of some Christmas baking? Oh, one of Rick's favorite silent auction purchases in the past <laughs> was a homemade pie every single month of the year. Because I don't make pies. <laughs> or, or maybe a ride to the airport for somebody who's going on a trip. <clears throat> Someone told me about a Balinese cooking and dining experience. That was a big item, ticket item for a silent auction. Wait, what are we doing with the bags? We try to find something to put in them, and that will be an appealing silent auction item. And, and then what? And then we collect the bags on November 28th, 29th, and 30th. And then we're going to auction them off at a wine and cheese event here at the church <laughs> on Friday, December the 1st. And of course, we'll need an auctioneer. And I volunteer for fate.
today's offering him is from Voices United number 400. God, listen to your children. Reconciling God, who made me in your image. Courageous God, who made me in your image. Peace 
bringing God, who made me in your image. Bless, protect, and keep me and all your children safe. Mothering God, who loves unconditionally the full spectrum of human diversity, we bring you these prayers and continue in prayer as we say, Beloved and given through this hand, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. There may be others as well. Uh, first, after worship today, reminded to uh, head through here to Gordon Hall, snag a coffee and a goodie, and then return here to the sanctuary for the half hour presentation by the Futures Exploration Group. Now, Joy or Ruben, did you want to say anything further, or will they figure it out when they get here? What we're trying to do today is give you a feel for the kind of work that's involved in serious futures thinking and the way that it maps onto the deeper themes of the Hebrew Christian tradition. Because we're preparing ourselves, uh, you may not be aware of it yet, but we are preparing ourselves. This is training in the same way before you go on a long hike, you might train before you do 4K, you would train. This is training as a community of faith before we have to ask the question, what are we up for next when Greg leaves us? So who do we call to help us in the next stage of our journey? So that's the way we want to frame it, and it would help if you understand that, and that would help if you actually come. <laughs> so that's where that returns today. Uh, next Sunday, worship is here at Canmore. We will be uh, marking Remembrance Day. And we will also remember, uh, remember, remember, stay the, the following Sunday in death. But next week here in Canmore, and a reminder, um, that's the time change Sunday. So I guess we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, Sunday, November the 12th, worship with communion is in death, followed by a workshop uh, that my spouse, Reverend Shannon Mang, will be helping us with when we revisit the histories of Banff, Canmore, and probably the Exshaw congregation as well, as a way that we hope to make our amalgamation as healthy as possible. Are there any other announcements to share at this time? Yeah, our hymn is from More Voices 138, My Love, Colors Outside the Lines.
the benediction come to us from the very Reverend Gary Patterson, the past moderator of the United Church of Canada. Friends in Christ, go from this time with open hearts, ready to encounter the Holy One in the daily, the ordinary in the flesh. Go from this time with a daring and tender love, seeking to mind God's beloved creation wherever and whenever you can. Know that God, who is love, goes with you, within, beside, and far ahead of you. Go into this day, into your life, trusting that you are held in the loving heart of the holy mystery, now and forever.